Well, good morning and welcome to Freedom Church. We're going to be doing something a little different starting with this morning. We're going to be capturing on video the service. So we're going to try this out and we're going to post it on our um, on our Facebook page. So people who miss the service can go and check and get the entire service. If you go to the um, the web page, freedomchurchalive.org, you'll get the audio sermon. But we're going to try this differently and you'll be able to get it. So we're going to ask that you just be conscientious if you need to get up and go to the restroom, go out the side instead of coming in uh, from this part here just come out to the end unless you want to get in the camera and go hi mom so we're going to we're going to try that and it's going to be a little bit different but um we are so glad that you are here if it's a little cold do we do we need to turn this fan off i, I think okay so anyway we're going to keep going we are still in our sermon series that God is greater than. God is greater than anything you will face, anything that you will ever face, and God is greater than any opposition that you can ever come against. So I just want you to realize that, and hopefully through this whole month of April, you've been inspired to be able to face difficulties in your life and to realize that God is greater than anything that you could ever come across. And believe it or not, April is almost done. We're getting ready to go into May. May and June, we're going to be out in the sun a little bit more. So are you guys ready for this? You guys know that you have a corny pastor, right? You guys know that your pastor is corny. Uh, so you know what the sermon series for May and June is going to be? It's going to be burnt. So, we're, and <laughs> yeah, burnt because people will be out in the sun more. So we're going to be talking about what does the Bible say? How do you protect yourself from getting burnt? And obviously that has many different types of connections uh, to it. We're going to be talking about finances. Have you ever been burnt financially? You ever make a bad financial decision and then you go, man, I kind of regret that you had buyer's remorse. Raise your hand if you've ever been burnt by relationships, right? So we're going to be talking about how the Bible talks about how we can make better decisions to keep from getting burnt, to, to keep from having bad consequences from the choices that we make. And uh, today and next week, I want you to do me a favor. Uh, we're sort of in the Easter letdown where all the people, I mean, I don't know if you were here uh, for Easter service, but we, we were about six chairs shy of being full capacity on Easter. Hey, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Every Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection. Every Sunday. That separated, the, that separated the New Testament church from the Jewish congregation. It's not that we wanted to be disobedient to God's command about remembering the Sabbath. But we're not Jewish. God does not call us to be Jewish. God calls us to be followers of His Son, Jesus Christ. Say amen. So it was on the first day of the week, which would have been Sunday, that Christ arose, Resurrection Sunday. So we, as New Testament believers, we gather ourselves on the first day of the week to commemorate, to celebrate the resurrection. We have got two more messages on God is greater than. I do not want you to miss. And would do me a favor. Next week, I don't want to I don't want to give away everything. I don't want to spill all the beans right now. But next week is critical because it talks about life issues. God wants us to understand that he has the recipes for successful life issues. And so next week, I want you to do me a favor and bring somebody with you because the most important thing that they will ever do is to hear the voice of God. And we want to encourage them to come and to be with us. Today what we're going to talk about is God is greater than our fear of speaking out. God is greater than our fear of speaking out. How many times have we felt God prompting us to speak to someone and we felt really uncomfortable about doing that? Or perhaps maybe what we've done is we've just kind of brushed it away and you may not see that person again. God is greater than our fear of speaking out. And, I mean, after all, let's face it. 
we're living in a time in uh, our culture that you say something, I don't care what it is, you're going to offend somebody. Somebody is going to get offended somehow, some way, somewhere. So we as the New Testament church, we have to be able to be bold enough and graceful enough to speak out on the issue that God calls us to speak out on. May we stand on truth or you'll never stand for anything. I know one person argued and said, well, Christians need to have an open mind. I know some Christians who have such, a, such an open mind, their brains have fallen out. We need to be able to stand and we better be able not to be afraid to speak out. So God is greater than our fear of speaking out. Would you follow along with us in your message outline, starting in Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. God is greater than our fear of speaking out. Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. As Philip, as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Candake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Now, that takes a certain amount of courage to be able to do that. I want to give you just a little bit of historical background of what's happening in the life of Philip. Philip is, he is not one of the original 12 of the 12 disciples, um, but certainly has an important part. We see that prior to Acts chapter 8, uh, Peter has already preached the famous day of Pentecost message where over 3,000 people come and commit their life to Jesus Christ. They want to become Christ followers. Three thousand over three thousand in one day. And then we forward into Acts chapter three, where uh, John and Peter enter into the temple. There's a lame man there. Through the power of God, they help to heal this man. He receives strength within his body, and he's able to walk and jump. And everybody in the temple knows this man was lame. And so, as a result of this, thousands more come to know Jesus Christ, they surrender their life to the Lord. So now in the city of Jerusalem, there's probably somewhere among ten to 12,000 people who have just become Christ followers. That's a, that's a lot of people in just a short amount of time. So the original disciples are busy encouraging people to grow in their faith. They are sharing the Word of God. They are in encouraging other people they're providing inspiration to them they're sharing the word of god and they're praying with them and we find in acts chapter 6 that the church has gotten so big that it's hard for them to keep up with all the other daily tasks that are in front of them somebody complains to him and says hey the widows and the orphans they're being they're being neglected in the daily ministry and you guys need to do something about that and they go yes you're all right However, we're not going to leave the teaching from God's Word, and we're going to continue to keep dedicating ourselves to prayer. We're going to do that. You need to appoint seven people who are filled with the Spirit of God, got a great reputation, they have a heart to chase after God, and you can use them to be involved in this daily ministration. Philip was one of these of the seven who was called and, and picked out to do this type of work. Well, God is is moving in the life of Philip. Philip is doing great and marvelous things. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit we see here in Acts chapter 8, the Spirit speaks to Philip and tells him to go to a chariot. It's kind of intimidating. Because if you know anything at all about this historical background here, um, a common person such as Philip just doesn't approach a chariot because... A chariot would be, in today's term, like a limo. Somebody very important. Somebody of power and prestige. And Philip doesn't know at all who this is. God is greater than our fear of speaking out. Maybe, maybe most of us didn't have any problem where we said, I'd like for you to come to church 
for Easter. But maybe now that Easter is over, maybe, maybe you feel a little uncomfortable about inviting somebody to come and trying to connect them in the faith. What we want to do this morning is I want to share with you four reasons why we should be willing to speak out. Four reasons why we should be willing to speak out. Point number one, we should be willing to speak out because we don't know what our influence will be. We just don't know what our influence will will be you may speak to someone you may speak to anyone doesn't necessarily have to be anybody that you know you may speak to someone and it tremendously impacts their life and you can change it for eternity not just for that moment but literally for eternity you don't know what what the influence will be the story is told of an evangelist and i can't remember the name of the evangelist but he was preaching a tent revival in a city Many, many years ago, and there was only one young man who came. And he thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and be faithful. God called me to preach, so I'm going to preach regardless if there's one or 1,000. And so the man preached in this tent revival, and the young boy, the young boy surrendered his life to Jesus Christ that night. The story is told that the life of the young boy was Billy Graham. You don't know what your influence will be. We see that Philip is speaking to a dignitary. He is the treasurer of Ethiopia. That's a very high, dignified, and high level responsibility position. And so he's speaking to this man. He's just just following. He's being obedient to the leadership of the Spirit of God. He is following the Spirit of God. And with all the grace... And with all the truth that he can speak, the Ethiopian eunuch has a life transformation moment with Jesus Christ. Well, this morning, let me just share some thoughts about what our influence can be. That that we can have influence. Have have you ever thought, well, I don't have influence. People won't listen to me. And that's, that's why I never ask anybody to come. Well, Let me just share some thoughts about your influence. We have influence when we are sure. We have influence when we are sure. When you are sure about something, you're not afraid to speak out. And you're not afraid about your influence. This morning, I want you to be sure that God wants you to speak. Even though you may not feel like speaking, God wants you to speak. You have a message You have a testimony that is unique. God wants you to speak. And be sure that we all can speak. You have a voice. Use it. Use it for the glory of God. You can tell about God's goodness. And be sure that if you are faithful to speak, be sure that God will do the rest. Can I just say something to you this morning? If you never... If you never sow seeds, God can't help them to grow. Somebody needs to say amen. If you never are faithful to plant seeds, God cannot help them to grow. So we have influence when we are sure. We also have influence when we are sincere. The number one thing. That the younger generation wants out of church, the church that are in their community, they spent about two or three years. Dave Kinneman and Gabe Lyons wrote a book. Recently, they wrote a book. It's called Unchurched. And they done studies. They predominantly went to um, college campuses across America. And they asked a lot of the same questions to find out what their thoughts, what their attitudes were about church. And this is what they said. The number one thing that they wanted out of church was not comfort, was not to make them feel nice, was not great singing, was not great preaching. They said the number one thing that they wanted from a New Testament church that was in their local community is they wanted the people to be sincere. Be the people who you say you are. Have you ever heard of church that says, man, you've got to be perfect to come here? Well, then you might as well leave because you ain't perfect. 
And it's almost as if we somehow, some way, get uncomfortable we ourselves when we talk that we, that we are not perfect. Let me just share something. You're a pastor. I have a heart for God. I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to, I want to be the man of God, the best man that I can be. But man, you smell my breath on Monday morning. I, I'm going to smell like I came from the devil. Somebody say amen. We were practicing here Sunday uh, just this morning, and I'm sweating. I, I sweat just like everybody else does, and when I when I sweat, I stink. So we're not we're not perfect. We're just not. And sometimes sometimes even though that we know that it's better, sometimes we have bad thoughts about other people. Uh, sometimes that we. We get angry and we get frustrated. We get disappointed in people. And, and sometimes we just find our, our, ourselves maybe getting lazy, spiritually speaking. Just be sincere. Be real people. Christians are not without faults, but we serve one who is faultless. Somebody needs to say amen. So we have influence when we are sure about our message. We have influence when we are sincere, when we tell people that we're not perfect. We have influence when we stop excuses. When we stop excuses. Please, if God has ever prompted you to speak to someone and urged you to witness to someone or invite them to church or invite them to your small group, would you please be obedient? I want to share two stories with you that just resonate in my heart. I want to, I want to share two real-life stories that happened. And I'm saying this not to scare you. I'm saying this to prove a point that, that when God moves upon our heart, that you will be prompted to move with conviction and that you will move with grace in your hearts. When I was stationed in Alaska, I was coming to the end of my my serving and my term in in the air force and there was a sales rep who kept coming in and we would always have conversations about church and i I was on several occasions i was so close to getting this man to come to church when we were in alaska but he never came and i would continue to keep asking and asking and, and he would openly admit he was not a christian he he was not a believer but I almost had him to come to church a couple of times. And he was going to take me. He was going to take me fishing on a Saturday. He owned a boat. And, and he knew a place where he was going to take me. And he came into the office. And we were talking. And the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. And told me to witness to him now. And you know what I did? You know what your pastor did? I said, well, I don't want to do it right now. I'll do it when we're on the boat on Saturday. We ended our conversation and he left and Friday night he was killed in a traffic accident. I want to tell you another story. The first time that my son-in-law, John Fry, when he went out on the sub. If you guys are listening, say amen. Because there are people that you will pass in your life who seem like they got it all together. Their uniform is always pressed. They always... He said, as far as job knowledge on the submarine, this guy had everything together. He was the best of the best. And John never spoke to this man. God never, or John never spoke to him. And when he finished the tour and they got out of the sub, that man went home and killed himself. I say that to say this. We have to stop making excuses. We have to understand that lives are in the balance. And you, listen, listen to me. You are the game changer. God sends you to be the game changer in their life. And so we need to be faithful. Well, what if they don't listen? What if we speak and they don't listen? Would you write this scripture down? Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 18, listen to this. This is God speaking. This is God speaking these words. When I say to the wicked, you are going to die, and you do not give them warning, nor do you speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways to save their life, 
The same wicked person shall perish, but their blood will I require at your hands. Because God prompted you to speak to them, and you didn't. How many times has God prompted us to speak to someone and we've, we've basically just said, not, not today, Lord. There have been times where we've seen people with broken hearts. And it was just too inconvenient. We have influence when we are sensitive. And there's two areas of sensitivity that we see in the life of Philip. Number one, Philip is sensitive to the leadership of the Spirit. So he is just, he is very obedient. When the Spirit speaks to him, Philip goes and joins to the chariot. He doesn't, he doesn't think of all these other issues. Even though that this person is probably much more fluent, is able to speak maybe different types of languages. Philip maybe is just a regular old kind of a country bumpkin type of guy. But he's, man, he's just faithful. He only, the only thing he knows is just be faithful. God opens the door, I'm just going to be faithful. So he's sensitive to God's leadership. The second thing that he's sensitive to is he's sensitive when he talks to people. You want to be a soul winner. You want to win people over to the cause of the cross of Jesus Christ. You've got to be sensitive to people. Taking out a spiritual baseball bat and whacking people on the head, that's not being sensitive. Rubbing them, rubbing them down with sandpaper. Man, I, I, I used to... Years ago, man, this guy, I tell you, he, and his motto, his motto was this, man, it was always tough, tough preaching. And his motto was, shear the sheep. Woohoo! Yeah, praise God, shear the sheep. And just burn the hide off of everybody who came to church. Just burn. I mean, th th this guy preached on everything. If you watch TV, man, that, that's wrong. If you went fishing on Sunday, that's wrong. If you went rabbit hunting, that's wrong. If you went to the mall, that's wrong. And just, man, just, it was abrasive. And I, it was sad because when this guy first, he was so dynamic. And, and church is literally, are you guys ready for this? He preached revival for 40 days straight. And it was in snow. And it was all in horrible conditions. And I think there was over 50 people who got saved. The guy had tremendous ability, but he was so rough and 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 so ungraceful. Didn't have any didn't have any grace to him at all. If you want to win people to the Lord, you've got to be sensitive to the leadership of God, and you've got to be sensitive to the people that you're talking to. Point number two: We should be willing to speak because we are created to be in fellowship with Jesus. We are created to be in fellowship with Jesus. Did you know that God's primary ambition in life is for people to be in fellowship with him? He created us to be in fellowship with him. Get a load of this. You are made in the very image of God. He wants you to be in fellowship with him. All of creation, all of creation today that you see literally is in fellowship with him. I mean, have you ever studied nature? The monarch butterflies that are being born, the monarch butterflies that are being born, they have never been in South America. Are you guys with me? Even the ones that are up in Canada, the monarch butterfly who are up in Canada that have never been in South America, they will, eventually, they will migrate. As it gets time, they will migrate and they will go down into South America and they will hatch their young, and then they will die, and then the young know to come back up this way. It's amazing. It's amazing. All of God's creation is in fellowship and built to be in fellowship with Him. Listen to these uh, scriptures. I, I just want to share three real quick. The first one is John chapter 3, verse 16. It's probably the most famous one. For, for God so loved the what? The world. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God doesn't want any to perish. God wants people to come to him and to be in fellowship with him. Secondly, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship. God calls people into fellowship. And the third one is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It grieves God's heart when people refuse to be in fellowship with him. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. 
For God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You might want to write these down. It's not a part of your message outline, but you might want to write these down. Number one, we've been created to know him. God wants us to know him. And we can. We can know him uh, through God's word. We can know him um, through an intimate relationship. But not just to know about him, but to really know him. Everybody, everybody has been created to know him. And let me tell you this. Everybody has a right to know about Jesus. I don't care what kind of limitations that they have. I don't care how bad they've been. I don't care how many jails that they've been. I don't care how many times that they've shot up. I don't care how many times that they've beat and been abusive to other people. I don't care how many times that they've been fired from other jobs. I don't care how bad that they've treated their parents. Everyone has a right to know about Jesus including the people who are in your circle of influence. Not only have we been created to know Him, we've been created to grow in Him. We've been created to grow in Him. This is probably one of the most solid evidences of true faith is that people want to continue to keep growing. We want to grow, we want to prosper, we want to be successful, and we want to grow more and more in Jesus Christ. And thirdly, not only have we been created to know him, not only have we been created to grow in him, but thirdly, we've been created to show him. How can we show Jesus Christ? I want you to remember this, that each and every day you have an opportunity to show Jesus to the people who are in your circle of influence, whether they're your next door neighbor, whether they're your family members, whether it's somebody that you work with. Each and every day, God gives us opportunities and abundant opportunities For us to be able to show who Jesus is. We can show who Jesus is through our generosity. God's people are giving people. Say amen. We can show Jesus through the grace that we bestow upon others. We are grace. People of grace. We're graceful people. We can show Jesus through our goodness. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works. They'll see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. And we can demonstrate His love to others. We can demonstrate love and patience and kindness to other people. We, we have that opportunity to do that each and every day. Point number three, we should be willing to speak because we have the best news in the world. The followers of Jesus have unequivocally the best news in the whole wide world. Did you know that the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, Verse 35, that same chapter that we took our text out of, and you go all the way down into verse 35, it says that Philip told the the Ethiopian treasurer the good news about Jesus. Did you know the, the word gospel in the original Greek, did you know the word gospel means good news? So every single time in the scripture that it says we preach the gospel, it means we preach the good news. Every single time where it says, and the gospel was preached, the word gospel means good news. You know, I just got to believe that the saddest saddest hour in America is between 6 and 7. Because the local news comes on from 6 to 6.30, and the world news goes from 6.30 to 7. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how the local news goes. Here's the local news. Yep, seven people got beat up and they all died. Thanks for watching. Here's the world news. ISIS blowed up some more stuff and people died. Thanks for watching. That's about all the news that you get. But there is good news. The single greatest bit of news in all of human history is that Jesus defeated death 
hell, and the grave. And that He rose again. This is the news. This is the news that we should be sharing. Let me tell you some major thoughts why we should share this good news. Number one, we should share the good news because we all need good news. Say amen. I want to tell you that in today's culture, listen, listen to me carefully, families need good news. We need, we need good news because marriages need good news. We need good news because schools need good news. We need good news because our government needs good news. We need good news because the drug addict needs good news. We need good news because the rich people need it. We need good news because the poor people need it. We need good news because the living need it. And we need good news because the dying need it. We need good news. We all need good news. It is the news of forgiveness. Wow. Man, that is tremendous. doesn't go into detail and say what this Ethiopian treasurer had done. You may have not killed anybody. You may have not done cocaine you may have not robbed but you still needed forgiveness because you had sin in your heart the bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god it is the news of hope it is the news that you have hope regardless of what's been behind you regardless all the the weights and the baggage that you've carried it is the message of hope and it is the message of restoration. God can take what has been damaged. God is, can, is able to take what has been destroyed. And to restore it. And to make it new. Did you know the Bible says. That he says I will, I will take their heart. He said I will take their stony heart. And I will give them a heart of flesh. Point number four. We should be willing to speak because point number four, we are commanded to go and tell. Our compassion for people should persuade us more than our fear. Our compassion for people. As a minister for over nearly 35 years, I've had people come and ask me, uh, hey, Dwayne, I think God is calling me into ministry and I always ask them two 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 questions number one do you love God's word because if you if you don't love to get into God's word and read it and almost be committed to it daily and read and read and digest large portions and put it in your heart if if you don't have that desire to to love God's word God's not calling you to preach because you've got to be able to preach God's word and then the second question I ask him is do you love people because if you don't love people God's not calling you to pastor a church it's our compassion for people i want to ask you to do something if you find yourself difficult to get along with certain people maybe maybe you've been ineffective in your talking and witnessing and discussing with them to be able to come to church and maybe you just need to pray for compassion before you speak to that person the next time also, our concern for people should push us. I don't know if you guys heard the local news or not. On uh, Wednesday, it was either Wednesday or Thursday. A UPS driver pulls up to a home in downtown Dayton. And man, this is just God at work. A UPS driver pulls up to a home to deliver a package and the house is on fire. So he just grabs, there's a garden hose, and he just turns it on and puts out the fire. Now, how many times, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to lay a guilt trip. I just want us to think. I want us to be honest with ourselves. How many times have we seen somebody in our life, it was a complete dumpster fire? I mean, everything around it was on fire, just a complete train wreck. And we deliberately turned away, showed no compassion, not even said, look, I know things in life aren't going your way right now. Is it okay for I just take time? Can I just pray with you? right now i'm telling you you will never understand fully understand 
the doors that can be open for God to start intervening on behalf of that individual. Just your faithfulness to say, I just want to I just want to pray for you right now. Our concern for people should push us. And lastly, this morning. Our command from Jesus. Should propel us. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, this is it's not called the great option. It's called the great command. Yeah, it's called the great commission. Where, where Jesus says, go into all the world and to preach. To every creature, it's the great commission. It's the commission that we've already been in, equipped and we've already been empowered to go out and to talk to people. God is greater than our fear of speaking out. Now, I can't force anyone to do anything. I, I, I can't. That's not the point. Because if you do something just solely based on me telling you, it's not going to last. It's not going to have an effect. But if you do, if you really reflect on what God says, and then you're prompted to go into action, just stand back and see what God does. But I'm going to ask you to do something this week. I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to ask you to do something here this morning is to think about the people that God has placed in your life that you have the opportunity to talk to. And maybe that you felt very uncomfortable about speaking to them, especially about spiritual matters. Man, it is just so always easy to talk about sports, to talk about the price of gasoline, to talk about world news, to talk about the new car that somebody got, or uh, just all the different things in life that we talk about. But when it talks about when it comes to talking about person's relationship with God, sometimes we just clam up and we become a little frightened and maybe a little bit hesitant to speak out. I'm going to ask you to pray this morning. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you to, to search your heart and the opportunities that God may give you this week to speak to someone. And I would like for you to, to bring somebody with you next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be a very important. I mean, all of our Sundays are important here at Freedom Church, but because it'll be the last one in regards to the connection to the sermon series, God is greater than. So I want to ask you to, to pray about that. Someone had to have the, the courage to speak to you about issues of faith. Whether it was your parent, grandparent, a sibling, a Sunday school teacher, a minister, whoever. Somebody had to have the faith and the courage and the grace to speak to you. Our heart's desire is to be a little bit more like Philip. To be in tune with God's prompting and leading. And to be sensitive to the people that we talk to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this point of the service. And as we just pause and reflect, I pray, Lord, that you help us to, to be sensitive to the times that you've opened up opportunities for us. And God, may we just be faithful to speak. Help us just to realize that we will speak the words of faith and truth. And Lord, you're going to take care of the rest. But help us to do that. Help us. Help us that our faith would be stronger than the fear.